Roger Kachuk, and I'm here with Deb Twig. And Deb is the co-founder of the Susquehanna River Archaeological Center here in Waverly. And I can tell you, the more I find out about this center here, it's almost mind-boggling how much one person has really done to get this going. What made you decide to even get involved in all this? Boy, that's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, really, I had no interest in Native American things other than, you know, just what anyone else would normally. And then my interest in a site that I went to from a fourth grade field trip came back to mind. I actually started studying a place called Spanish Hill. That place um, took me on a journey of learning about our Native American past. Not only about our Native American past, but about all the things we don't know about our Native American past. Mm -hmm. It also put me in the path to meet two of the other co-founders of this organization, Ted Keir and Dick Cowles, who were both in their 80s when I met them and had massive collections in their own homes. The Boy Scouts were going to their house, okay? That's where they were going to see this kind of stuff. And I asked both of those men while I was at their homes, what are you gonna do with this stuff? And neither one had a clear answer or a clear idea of what they were gonna do with it because even though they had contacted many of the museums and universities around, their vision of what they wanted to happen with those artifacts were different than those organizations. That being, are you gonna put them on display? Is the public going to be able to enjoy them? So how did you get contacted by these people to get their collections? You've got more than just these two guys. You've got a whole bunch in here. Basically, the, the way that I met those guys was through my research, through my research of that site. And what I found out about that site is, one, collectors have been picking up artifacts at that site over the last hundred years. This is Spanish Hill. Yes, yeah. which made it very hard for people to understand what was going on there. Because literally, young boys to old men had little shoe boxes filled with artifacts from different places around here. So that was a concern that came to mind when I met these gentlemen. So, I went to them because they both had actually excavated in Spanish Hill at different points in their life. Ellsworth Cowles actually in 1933. So my whole idea was go meet these guys, have them tell me what they knew, and in the meantime, I went to their homes and saw these massive collections and was like, oh my God, there's the evidence. There's the evidence that I've been looking for to help us understand our Native American past. So how were these guys when they met you and then you all of a sudden you're excited that they had what they, what was their reaction? Their, their response was this, oh my God, there's somebody that knows what we're talking about. That's always a good thing. <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness, we're talking the same way. Oh, she knows about that. Mm -hmm. And so we really connected very fast because of that. Yeah. And it wasn't that I didn't have learning curves but it was that they knew that I had a passion about this stuff that they wanted to help feed. And so by the time uh, two years had rolled by, we were already talking about making a nonprofit to bring those artifacts under one roof. But not only to do that, to actually preserve them in a way that we could use them for ongoing research. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a different uh, idea for a place you would call a museum, and we don't call ourselves a museum because of that. We call ourselves an archeological center, mm -hmm. and that was right out of the gate. Our plan is that we wanna save everything that we possibly can that can be used to further research, but we also want to be able to educate the public and continue research into sites that haven't been touched yet so that we can go ahead and start uncovering scientifically through the strata, answers that have never been answered before in our area. And what we're talking about is 1000 AD, mm -hmm. 
1200 AD, 1500 AD, because the first white explorer doesn't come here until the 1600s, there is so much of that past that is just not clear. And you've got collections here that have artifacts from all these eras, from the Ice Age up to the Revolutionary War, and you're still accepting new collections. So if there's avid collectors out there and researchers, they can come on down, meet with you, and talk about how to incorporate their collection into the center here. And the other thing that we try to do is that there's people that have collections that don't know what they have. So they might have a bunch of rocks they picked up at the river, but they, you know, they think, well, you know, this looks like a this or a such. And they, they are welcome to bring those items in without actually incorporating them into our museum. We will help them to understand what they have, if they're significant, and what they can do to preserve the information about those artifacts that will make them helpful to researchers, no matter whether they stay in their home or come here. How many collections are actually here now? Over 100. some of the artifacts, not necessarily from Spanish Hill, that people were picking up in the 1930s. Um, so when we look at some of these things, that's what you're talking about. You go to any national museum, it's hard to find things better than what you're going to find in this case. Oh, we're exactly. picking up locally. Yep, exactly. Look at the detail on that. Yeah, this pipe was actually, this is a clay pipe. It's a bird effigy. And this was found uh, in Queen Esther's Flats in Athens, PA. Wow. Yeah, that's just this incredible piece. We're up the second floor of your building here, and, and those of a certain age will remember the Philadelphia sales stores in the area. And when you come up here, it smells like the old Philadelphia sales buildings, the old hardwood floors, it looks like it. And this is the space where you're going to convert into a, a laboratory, research, storage, and all that kind of stuff. And I know it's a, it's a big financial endeavor to get involved in. You work on uh, your nonprofit organization, so you're working on volunteers, donations, and all that stuff. So um, tell me a little bit about what you're planning for this floor here once funding is in place and how it's going to help the community. Our idea is that, you know, we allow other researchers to come in as well to be able to get the data that we are accumulating. But in the meantime, we have to have a place to process the artifacts to be able to record that data. So when we talked about the internships through Bloomsburg and other universities, what we're hoping to do is get students in, allow them to be a part of this process with our volunteers. We're 100% volunteer staff, so getting more and more staff in to begin to process, I'm talking thousands of artifacts just from our one excavation that we're doing. Wow. Uh, we'll need sinks, we'll need microscopes, we'll need digital microscopes, we'll need the computers, we'll need um, different uh, mechanical devices that help us sift out soils and allow us to get to the botanicals that are within those soils. Um, different items that um, are, some are basic laboratory tools, some are very specific to the trade of archaeology. But within this space, um, what we hope to have is, um, over here will be sinks along this wall. That's where the plumbing is, that's where all that's going to happen. In there is an office, and that will be a locked space for some of the higher end things that we have to keep under lock and key mm -hmm. while being in this space. Sure. Storage will be over there, more tables, more research areas with machinery here. And then over there, probably in that corner, what we'll have is more of a table, a, a meeting place so that when the researchers come or when we are researching different items, we have a place to bring people together. Um, with our uh, excavation that we have right now, we actually have new pottery that dates 10,050 or 1,050 AD, mm. and we can't find a match in New York or PA. Wow. Wow. So 
a meeting place for other professionals to come in and to help us decipher some of the questions that we're coming up with mm -hmm. um, is going to be part of this whole research piece. So essentially, you got a complete build out you're looking at here with HVAC, plumbing, heating, and you know, water and electric. Furnace. All of it. Everything. Plus, you've got to have the specialized equipment to do the actual research. Is there any number in place yet, what you're looking at? What's it going to take to accomplish all this? Right now, what we've got is a $20,000 starter, and that will get us walls, that will get us a ceiling, that will get us the basic insulation and hopefully a couple windows. Yep. Um, the next step is to be able to get that furnace, to be able to get the lighting, to be able to get the flooring, to be able to get the next step. That's probably another 20. Yeah. And then it's probably another 50 to 70 to get the equipment. And so if you know this building, yeah. you know what it looked like downstairs as well. And what we do is slow and steady, try to get this done. But I can tell you, um, the staff that we have, the professionals that we have, we are ready to do the work. We need help to get the work done. And I just think it's so exciting for everyone in the uh, community to realize this kind of thing is going on here in Waverly, New York. And why wouldn't you want to get behind? Yes, exactly. So I know you've got some different uh, venues of support in donating and volunteering. Uh, let's go down and take a look at your gift shop and we'll talk about that and we'll go from there. Thank you. You're welcome. One of the things that first attracted me to this place is I have a 10 year old daughter and we came down a couple times and the first time she was handed a test and all the answers were in the museum if she completed it. And she got a geode at the end or a small rock to choose. And we spent hours in here doing it. It was one of the best times that we've had. And it's in Waverly, New York. And people don't think it's here. So I know uh, it's all the items in the research lab and the, the, the displays and the digs and everything. The only thing I do know for sure is it takes money. It costs money. And I know that uh, you've got various ways of getting this. We're in your gift shop here, which is quite a bit larger than most people would think. And it's got a lot of great, unique stuff that people wouldn't realize until they stepped in here. Tell me a little bit about what ways people can donate and support the SRAC and help it get a stronger footing in the community. That's a great question. Because, you know, we don't take state or federal funding, first of all. So everything that we get is donations. <clears throat> um, be it someone donates a bookcase, someone donates um, an artifact. That's one of the ways people can donate to us. Another way is to volunteer, to actually come here and help us man this place so that people can come in. The other two that I'm sure you're looking for is how do I make a donation to SRAC. Well, you know, we are a nonprofit, 501c3, so it is tax deductible if you do your deductions. And what you can do is just get online. Uh, if you go to our website, www.sracenter.org, you can go in there and make a donation. We've got a GoFundMe page. Or you can walk right in our door and make a donation. You can also become a member. Being a member actually adds to the amount of revenue that we can bring in here. Um, another way that you can raise money for SRAC is to actually um, donate something that I can sell on the other side of the street, which is the Crooked River Co-op. And I will sell that in that shop. 100% of that money comes back here as a wow, fundraiser. that's great. So at the end of this video, you're going to see a detailed list of the variety of ways you can donate and support this center that's really an asset to our community. Deb, I want to thank you for having us come in today. It's been great. Thanks so much for coming in. I really appreciate being able to share all this with you. You're welcome. Thank you very much.